Do you have the guts to fail? Here's my second point about failure. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. I'll say it again. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. My wife told me this great expression. To get something you never had, you have to do something you never did. It says, imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they said. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? So you got to get out there. You got to give it everything you got, whether it's your time, your, your, your talent, your prayers, or your treasures. Because remember this, you will never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't take it with you. The Egyptians tried it. So the question is, what are you going to do with what you have? I'm not talking about how much you have. Some of you are business majors, some of you are theologians, nurses, sociologists. Some of you have money, some of you have patience, some of you have kindness, some of you have love, some of you have the gift of long suffering, whatever it is, whatever your gift is. What are you going to do with what you have? All right, now here's my last point about that. Sometimes it's the best way to figure out where you're going. Your life will never be a straight path. I began at Fordham University as a pre-med student. I, 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 I took a course called the car, cardiac morphosis. I still can't say it. Cardiac, cardiac morphogenesis. I couldn't read it. I couldn't say it. I sure couldn't pass it. So then I decided to go into pre-law, then journalism. And with no academic focus, my grades took off in their own direction. I was a 1.8 GPA one semester, and the university very politely suggested that it might be better to take some time off. I was 20 years old, I was at my lowest point. And then one day, and I remember the exact day, March 27th, 1975, I was helping my mother in her beauty shop. My mother owned a beauty shop up in Mount Vernon. And there's, there was this older woman who was uh, considered one of the elders in the town. And, I didn't know her personally, but I, I was looking in the mirror, and every time I looked at the mirror, I could see her behind me, and she was staring at me. She just kept looking at me. Every time I looked at her, she kept giving me these strange looks. So she finally took the dryer off her head and said, some, she said something I'll never forget. First of all, she said, somebody give me a piece of paper. Give me a piece of paper. She said, young boy, I have a prophecy, a spiritual prophecy. She said, you are going to travel the world and speak to millions of people. Now mind you, I'm 20 years old, I'm flunked out of school. In fact, like a wise ass, I'm thinking to myself, maybe she's got something in that crystal ball about me getting back into school next fall. But maybe she was on to something, because later that summer, while working as a counselor at the YMCA camp in Connecticut, we put on a talent show for the campus, and after the show, another counselor came up to me and asked, had you ever thought about acting? You're good at that. So when I got back to Fordham that fall, I got in and I changed my major once again for the last time. And in the years that followed, just as that woman prophesied, I have traveled the world and I have spoken to millions of people through my movies. Millions who up till this day couldn't see me, I, who, who up till this day I couldn't see while I was talking to them and they couldn't see me, they could only see the movie. They couldn't see the real me. But I see you today and I'm encouraged by what I see and I'm strengthened by what I see. And I love what I see. You'll see what I mean about taking risk or being willing to fail. Because taking risk is not just about going for a job. It's also about knowing what you know and what you don't know. It's about being open to people and to ideas. In the course of the film, the character I play begins to take small steps, small risks. He very, very, very slowly begins to overcome his fears. And I feel ultimately his heart becomes flooded with love. And I can't think of a better message as we send you off today. To not only take risks, but to be open to life, to accept new views, and to be open to new opinions. Because the chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. When you leave the friendly confines of Philly, 
Never be discouraged. Never hold back. Give everything you've got. And when you fall throughout life, and maybe even tonight after a few mini glasses of champagne, remember this, fall forward.